Now we've been talking about uh, sorting stability as an important concept to consider when we're looking at sorting algorithms. But let's look in a little bit more detail why that's important. So the examples that, uh, that we've uh, alluded to at this point, primarily um, in, the, in talking about counting sort, uh, they're based on entities having single values, okay? So for instance, an integer, um, a set of integers, each have a single value, just the value of that integer. And it's a little bit more um, difficult to see the value of stability when we look at it from that perspective. However, there are times when entities having multiple attributes need to be sorted. And it is here that we see the actual value of sorting stability. So let's imagine that we have an array of some name structs. And so name is a type here or name classes. And each of these have a first name data member and a last name data member. So in this case, we might want our array to be sorted by last names, but within the same last name, we want it to be sorted by first names. So let's first take a look at an example array Okay, so here's an array of four individuals and their first and last name. Last name is in the left column and the first name is in the right column, as you can see. And as you can tell, this is not sorted by either of those uh, fields. So it's a completely unsorted array. And so if we wanted to, to get the behavior that we mentioned uh, in, in, the, in the bullet above, we must first sort the array by first name. Doing so then would give us this array. Now, this array is still not fully sorted, but as um, you can see, for the two individuals who have the last name Lee, uh, they, they in fact are sorted with respect to one another. And this, it is, it is this very fact that makes us want to preserve the order of what I've mentioned um, as the unsorted order. Because with respect to last names, this is still an unsorted array. Okay, but we want to, we've already made a single pass at this array and we want to be able to preserve this quote unquote unsorted order um, so that the final, uh, the final sort will actually reflect what we want it to reflect. So this, the, the, the final thing that we would do would be to sort this array by last name. And as you can see, we have, um, in, in, in our, after sorting by first name, this individual, Lee, came before this individual. And we want to be able to preserve that in that last, in that final sorted array. So that here is, uh, here is individual uh, number one. And here's individual number two. And with respect to one another, we retained what was an unsorted array from the, from the standpoint of last names. We retained that when we sorted the, uh, the array by last name. So hopefully you can see uh, the importance. Uh, this example shows the importance of sorting stability. In essence, it's what gives us the ability to sort by multiple attributes, if, if you will. And we can do this by, you know, not only two attributes, but by 
n number of attributes. Uh, and, uh, and it is this that we're chasing after when we look at the stability of sorting algorithms. So an algorithm like selection sort does not guarantee um, that, uh, that this order, that this pre-final sort order is preserved. Now let's look at the stability of the algorithms that we've talked about. So insertion sort, let's begin with that. Uh, insertion sort, of course, Let's look at the stability of the algorithms we discussed. Uh, let's begin with insertion sort. So insertion sort, as you'll recall, only takes a look at, assuming that this is the sorted portion and we just uh, revealed this card this card will only travel as far as it needs to, as far as it needs to, in order to, um, to be placed in its final location. Therefore, uh, if there was a, uh, a one here and a four here, which I'm willing to call four A and a four here, since this four is not greater, uh, is, is not uh, less than this four, this data would not be moved. And, and so the, um, the data would remain as it was pre-sort. So the order is, it is the same pre-sort as it is post-sort if the keys are similar. In this case, both of these entities have the key four. The one that shows up first is 4A, the one that shows up is 4B, they retain their order in insertion sort. In bubble sort, it's pretty much the same thing because if we pick up, if we move all the way to the end and we pick up the 4B, we will only swap it uh, if it is actually less than the entity to its left, it is not in this case, so they remain in place, okay? And, and so that is stable, but now I'm obviously not showing you the, the, rest, of the, the rest of the array, but I, I'm depicting how it's, uh, it's stable when we move data, okay? So we would never, if we found this 4B all the way at the end, we would never move it past this 4B, which was already anchored in its place. If you remember bubble sort, um, you pick a position to lock in at every step and that position lock, locks in from the left to the right. So if the 4A is there, not, the only thing that can bump the 4A out of the way is something that is less than four. Okay, now let's look at uh, selection sort. So let, let's uh, depict. Now to show that something is not stable, we just have to show one case, okay? And so I'm going to use this one case to, to make the point that selection sort is not stable. Okay, so we have, uh, we have 4A here and uh, we have 4B here, and we have the value one here. And again, remember, this is the pre-sort um, order, and this order between the fours has to be retained once we're sorted. Well, let's look at what, what this ends up being. When we look to position this value, the value at index zero, we will sweep all the way to the right and we will remember the lowest value that we saw and then we will swap the two. So when I swap these two, I will get the array that looks like this 
which is 1, then 4b, and then 4a. And as you can see, we have lost this order. This is not stable. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put uh, no here. Okay, and I will put yeses by these other two. Okay, let's take a look at shell sort. Again, all I have to do to prove that something is not stable is to show you an example where it is not stable. And I'll use a similar example to the one above. Uh, let's say we have our input in this order for A, then for B, and then one, and we decide to do a two sort. Well, a two sort sorts these two and then sorts this one by itself, okay? Well, when I sort 4A and 1, I'm going to end up with 1, and then 4B, and then 4A, okay? Because again, we sort just, it's a two sort, so I sort the things that are two units apart, two elements apart. I've got 4A here, I've got 1, I sort these two, the 1 belongs in the front, the 4A moves to the back, we end up with this situation and that is not stable. We have lost the original order. So that the answer to this one is no. Now, with respect to heap sort, it would be enough for me to just tell you that in heap sort, by its very definition, heap sort does not have a total order. It only has a partial order. And as a result, uh, we cannot establish an order across the entire uh, heap to begin with so that we have an order to preserve in the, in, the, uh, in the array, okay? So heap sort by virtue of not having a total order is not stable. Now let's examine quick sort for stability. Let's say that um, we've got our small array and we're going to execute quick sort. So we've got value here for A and then we've got for B in that order and then we have one. The index here is zero. The index is, um, here is two, two plus zero div one. That makes this the pivot swap the pivot into the first location for B and then for A and then one and index I is sweeping to the right and it's looking for greater than or equal to the pivot so it stays put. Index J is sweeping to the left and it is looking for less than or equal to the pivot so it stays put and thus we swap these two entities. So we have then 4B and then 1 and then 4A. And remember I remained here and J remained here. So now uh, I is going to sweep to the right looking for um, greater than or equal to the pivot. So I comes to this location and J sweeps left looking for less than or equal to the pivot and so j, j ends up here and since the two indices have crossed we swap pivot and j and pivot is here and j is at index uh, one is pointed to index one and now we have this and uh, this situation and since uh, b was our pivot way back here for b this now is locked into place and we sort a list of one to the left and a list of one to the right. They both stay in place, but we have lost our order. Therefore, uh, quick sort is not stable. Okay, let's take a look at merge sort. The key to making sure that merge sort is stable and merge sort is considered to be a stable sorting algorithm is to make sure that when we're merging the lists, if we have something in the less in the left list that is the same value as something in the right list, 
we always take from the left list first. And so if we do that, then we ensure uh, that the thing that, that was further most to the left uh, is out front. And so that makes, hopefully intuitively, you can see that that makes merge sort stable. With respect to the linear sorting algorithms, uh, I would invite you to go back and to look at the counting sort video where I specifically made the point that counting sort is stable because the, the final array, that temp array, is loaded backward. It's loaded from n minus 1 to 0. So as we travel left through the array or as we travel from the bottom of the array to the top, um, and that ensures stability uh, because we decrement that, that value in count so that if I place, uh, if as I'm sweeping, so, uh, and, and let's say I've got a value here, that's X and that same value here, that's X. I will encounter, since I sweep this way, I will encounter this uh, this value first and it goes into the final temporary first and then I decrement uh, the count index so that next time I encounter this same value it will go to the left of it having decremented it so counting sort is stable and again I would invite you to go back to the uh, original video uh, to see the details of that that's a rather detailed sorting algorithm finally radix sort the key with radix sort is again to remember that as we build that list we initially have a sequence of numbers uh, and we always take from the leftmost number to add to the list and so as we add things to the list that means that it, they came from later for it to be later in the linked list, it means it came from further down the list. Furthermore, for subsequent steps, when we remove, um, when we uh, take the output of this particular pass to go into the next pass, once again, we take these linked lists exactly as they are from top to bottom and from left to right. And so radix sort is stable.